Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to be picking up on a story that um, someone mentioned in the comments section concerning Eartha Kitt and why she received backlash for marrying interracially. Now, a lot of people don't understand what was going on back in the day. Uh, that same thing is happening right now. This is why I said in a previous video that it's by design that so-called black people are marrying outside of their selves. Now, I do realize that uh, some of the people that I'm speaking of would be considered mixed race or whatever, but uh, from their standard, they believe themselves to be... Um, even today, we have the same things happening to where uh, people of color are being encouraged to pretty much wipe themselves out. And so on the screen, you have their... Um, an excerpt from an article where there were some questions being asked of Eartha Kitt and so it reads as follows it says do you think you faced a lot of resentment just because you were married to a white man now here is Eartha's response she said oh yes that caused a resentment I was married to Bill McDonald in 1960 people would say why didn't you marry a black man I would reply because the white girls had them. The men I wanted to be with, Sidney Portier, Harry Belafonte, dated predominantly white women. I'm talking about the 50s when Harry Belafonte picks me out of his bed in Philadelphia and said, I don't want to take, I don't want you to take me seriously because no black woman can do anything for me. I could not help him to progress into where he was. A black woman would hold a black man back. That's what he told me. If I wanted to marry a black man, there wasn't one because the white girls had them. Now, look at Eartha Kitt. She was a beautiful, melanated woman. But even for her, it was difficult because a lot of so-called black men, even of that time, we're talking about the 1950s. We see the same thing happening today, but even if at that time, they were being encouraged to marry white women because of success. They felt that they could achieve more success by marrying white women and shunning black women. So in this case, even though Eartha Kitt herself was a professional woman. She was a woman of status. I'm not sure how much money she had back then, but she what she wasn't a bum. She was an actress too. But you had very well known famous black men who said, uh uh, I don't think so. You cannot help me progress. And so when you think of today's time, you have some of the same excuses that are flying but what they've done is reworked because they know it doesn't sound right so they start pointing out all of the faults of the black woman and they prop those up as the reasons why they are not choosing black women as if no white woman has the traits that they are describing Oh, they talk too much or they want too much. They're gold diggers. It's kind of funny when, uh, whenever I hear or see a black man say that a black woman is a gold digger and she's just after my money and all of this kind of stuff. And he ends up marrying someone of another race. And then just years down the line, that same woman divorces them, takes them to the ringer, takes half and says, Arriva Dirty. That's always so funny to me because the one thing that you were accusing black women of, which is being gold diggers, is the thing that you fell victim to, but it wasn't by a black woman. So there's definitely some type of mental block going on to where um, our men and our women are not seeing the forest for the trees. They're coming up with all of these other reasons why they are making the choices they're making. Coming up with all of these other reasons why but the real reason is right within their hearts. The love of money. 
Harry Belafonte, she said he lifted her right up out of his bed and said, a black woman can't do anything for me. So his choice was based on fame and fortune, money and all of that. It wasn't based on love. How many today are making those same choices? And so you can't fortify yourself or your group when you think like that. It's impossible. You cannot strengthen yourself or your group when you think that someone who looks like you would weaken you. So to me, that's a person who's just flat out lazy and don't want to admit it. They don't want to struggle together to make it to the top. They want it handed to them because of who they're with. They don't want to have to fight for it and earn it. And they don't realize that the puppet masters, those who are pulling the strings behind the scenes, know something. They understand that we can't allow these two to keep coming together. Black men, black women, creating black children. We got to come in there and interrupt that somehow. We got to send our women to infiltrate. We have to send our men to infiltrate because we can't allow them to fortify their bloodline, you see. So it goes deeper than all of this other superficial stuff you all are thinking or some of you are thinking. There's a spiritual thing going on that many cannot see. It's an interruption of the bloodline. Some of us have been tricked into thinking that anything that looks like us is of lower degree and that we need to be outside of ourselves to improve us. You think you're improving your bloodline, your look, your lineage by whiting yourself out? You're kicking your own self in, self in the teeth don't even realize it. You're screaming to the mountaintops, telling the whole world that you can't stand your own self. When you really analyze the thought behind what our people are doing, that's really what it boils down to. They only trick their own minds into saying and thinking that, oh, they fell in love or love knows no color and all of this and all of that. You got to come up with reasons and excuses to make it stick, to make it fit, to make it work, to trick your own mind. You have to come up with excuses. Otherwise, you have to face reality. And the reality is we think we're better when we step outside of ourselves. And this is why we can't fortify truly because we continue to white ourselves out on purpose. And we continue to make excuse after excuse after excuse. Now, there are those who don't care what the Bible says about this. They don't care about the historical facts. Even if you get the Bible off the table, they don't even want to look at history. History gave us some, some very good details of a whole lot of things. But those simple-minded among us choose to ignore precedents that have been set over and over again don't even want to know the truth reality doesn't matter you want to live life the way you want to live it regardless of consequences you stress this thing out another hundred years how many of us will actually exist that are truly melanated if you know what I mean there was an article that was released some years ago they were saying most of the world's population population is going to look like this particular um, face and they showed the face of a mixed race person with green eyes tan like skin straight hair and uh, very European features and just everything just kind of all mixed it mixed in and blended together they were saying that this is what the majority of the population of the earth would look like if we continue how we're doing things now. But see, we just don't get it. 
Whose bloodline is being interrupted? Whose? We so silly, we don't even get all of that. We don't know, we don't care, we don't understand. Our bloodlines are being infiltrated and we are being whited out. And many of us just don't care. I'm not saying this for any other reason than the fact that we as a people really don't like ourselves. We despise our own selves and we think that in order to improve ourselves, we gotta step outside, mix and mingle and entangle, using that new silly word by that couple, entangle ourselves again with the yoke of bondage. Toss that little scripture in there. But there is a prophecy that I'm not going to get into uh, concerning all of the groups on the, on the earth, all of the different racial groups on the earth. I'm not going to get off into all of that, but there is a prophecy. And Yahuwah's word has gone forth out of his mouth, and it shall not return void. If it was spoken, it shall come to pass. Simple as that. But right now, what we've got to do is understand what we are looking at, what we are seeing, what we are witnessing. We are whiting ourselves out. Okay, I'm done with this family. Until next time, Shalom. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.